Hi Libra, welcome to your weekly reading with me, Cindy. So guys, this, are, this is the week of the deeper spiritual messages. And I'm using quite a few oracle cards or decks. I'm using four oracle decks and one tarot deck at the end. It does take me a while to get to the part where I'm saying the message because I'm shuffling the decks and then I'm putting it all out on the table and then it takes me a minute to look at the spread and start to get the message. So if anyone would be kind enough, someone who's watching, to um, put a little timestamp in the comments and I will like, or will like, I will heart it and I will pin it. And there's something on my glasses and it's bothering me. There's like a little speck of dust. So please bear with me. Because if I can't see the cards because of a speck of dust. All right. Libra, 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 my scales of justice. Deeper spiritual messages for Libra. Deeper spiritual message or messages for Libra. With the mouse, the stingray, and the bear. I think that was it. Let's see, let's see. Now, so this is really different from how I do other readings. Like I'm not gonna, I'm not just doing these two cards and getting the energy. So there's some energy that's coming from these cards and some messages, but as the others come out, it kind of really builds up on what this is. So here, I'll show you, you got this stingray. You got the mouse. And you got the bear. All right, let's go into the Shaman Oracle deck. And again, if someone was kind enough to put a timestamp on the reading, I should start. You can just go there if you don't want to watch me shuffle. But I like to shuffle on camera so you can see that it's all real, it's just happening, it's coming out, and I'm getting the cards. Oh, I thought it was three. You got two. Wow. Soul Retrieval. Oh, that's interesting. The Seer. And the Gatherer. Um, deeper spiritual messages for Libra. Deeper spiritual messages for Libra. One came out, maybe that's it. It came out really fast. Oh, a second key. All right. It's the second one. Oh, yeah. You are never alone, Otter Spirit. These little guys come out at least two other times, I think, this week. And Badger Spirit, be fearless and bold. If you hear music in the background, so it's my son's home today because they're doing rotating strikes um, at his school board. And he got a new office chair, so he's putting it together. <laughs> he's not even 10, but I'm impressed because I'm like, wow, all those years of putting those Lego sets together has paid off. So he sat there and he opened everything up and he counted his bolts and his nuts and he's pretty over. <laughs> so he's got his music playing. His bedroom is next door, so that's what he's doing right now. Normally he'd be at school while I'm doing this, but. So Libra, it's enough about me and what's going on in the background. Libra, Libra. Mm, mm. Oh, okay. So that's the El Key Oracle deck that I was shuffling. She who? You have she who loved once. She who knows. <laughs> You're tapping. <laughs> she who loved once and she who knows. Okay, give me a second. So this is where I need just to look at the cards. starts now so uh, hmm. I feel like this message for whoever resonates it's one of those Gemini had one that was a little tough it was a little bit like spirits coming in and saying hey listen uh, uh, uh. it's a little bit 
like that. Remember, I'm just the messenger. So it, I'm just getting this message of, um, you're coming into a new cycle, something new, something's changed. The dynamic in your life seems different somehow. Something has changed and you're hesitant to move forward with this change. You're hesitant to, to move forward, but yet there's some sort of expansion and growth with this, which is associated to you moving forward with this change in your life in some part of your, the situation of your life, some sort of relationship dynamic that could be in work, it could be personal, it could be friendship, it could be romantic, it could be family. Like there's some sort of, I feel like relationship dynamic and it's, it's not necessarily you. It feels like it may not even necessarily be something that changed in your life. But maybe it's someone you're really close to, someone that you work with and it changed in their life. Um, or it could be like a spouse and it could be a friend of theirs or a family member of theirs. And I don't know why, but you're hesitant to embrace this. You're hesitant to embrace this. You're trying to become grounded. It's left you feeling, I want to say, with the stingray and the mouse, it's left you feeling a little bit insecure. A little bit insecure about something, either about your life, about what you thought you knew about life. And you almost want to, I feel like I immediately, like the message really came in with this card, like everything I'm talking about, this soul retrieval, I just feel so much like this butterfly is trying to get back into the chrysalis. The butterfly is trying to get back into the chrysalis. <laughs> I don't like this new thing. I don't like this new journey. I don't like this new dynamic. I don't like this change. And it is, it's left you feeling insecure somehow about your journey. I want to say spiritual journey, but I mean, that's all spirit. But it's left you feeling insecure about the Hmm, it's weird. It's really weird. Oh, yeah, whoa. You see something in this that you see coming to yourself. Oh my gosh, okay. So, huh. So whatever this is, almost as if you've witnessed something happen to someone else that's not necessarily like really close to you. It doesn't feel like it's really close to you because I'm not getting the energy. The cards are not here to support that this is a huge room or a huge um, emotional upheaval in your life. It's almost like something that you have seen happen in someone else's life and it's projecting. You're somehow, it's like your subconscious is projecting. If this can happen here, it can happen anywhere. It could happen where I am. It could like <laughs> almost, it reminds me of Kay the first time when I was a little kid, everything is always, I'm sorry. I'm gonna be so bad when I'm old because you know how old people always have stories about their lives? I'm like, I'm not even 50 and I go down that road every time. But this reminds me of the first time something really bad and painful happened to me as a little kid. I caught my, which two were they? I think were these two fingers caught in the car door. My mom and I were going shopping. I think I was like maybe eight. I don't know how old I was. Something like that, eight maybe six, seven, eight, I don't know. And like the door was, it was a big old, this is the seventies. It was a big old boat of a car. Everything was metal. Like these two fingers, the door closed, the door locked. I was just screaming. I remember it screaming. And my mom comes around <laughs> and she pulls me, she runs me to where we're in a mall. She runs me to the mall, puts it under cold water. All these other women, I remember in the women's mall, she's moving oh me. And I don't remember what happened ever that. Maybe I passed out. I was like, oh my God, I don't know. I don't remember. I'm not good with physical pain, not at all. And um, anyways, what I distinctly remember was one or two days after, okay, then that's something traumatic that happened to me, but this is the association. This is almost like that childlike, oh my God, what if? I woke up one morning and I wouldn't get out of bed. 
And mom's like, come on, you gotta get back, you gotta go to school. I was like, no, no, something bad could happen today. She's like, what do you mean? Nothing bad is gonna happen. What could happen? And I said to her, I said, like, it was like, it just dawned on me. I had no idea these two fingers were gonna get caught in the car door. And it was, it was caught back. I don't think they broke though. I don't know, maybe they did. Maybe that's why I have, I think I have big knuckles. <laughs> My mom, I don't know what happened. I don't remember things on there, but I just remember being so terrified that I had no control over things that could happen or expectations. Like what could, what if something bad happens? And I don't remember what she said to me. She talked me out of it somehow, or she just said, listen, you get out of bed or you're grounded, probably. It was the 70s. We weren't like gentle. Get the hell out of bed. You gotta go to school, I have to go to work. You know, like that. Um, but I don't think she did that. No, she probably talked to me. Anyways, it's that energy, that feeling of this happened over here. Oh my God, it could happen to me, I feel like. And yet, whatever this is, it has changed the dynamic around you. Like it's someone that you're close to, but not super close to. However, you know, they don't go to family dinners with you. Maybe they're the neighbor. You know, it's someone that you have some connection to. And you are, so this is what, okay. So with the seer, I feel like your seer energy has gone like crazy, <laughs> has gone crazy with this energy. And it's affecting the gatherer. The gatherer is, should be abundance, should be the future, should be, you know, harvest time. Everything that you've worked for, the things that you're going to get at the end of the, the day at the end of the cycle for all these wonderful things and your seer is looking at that going oh my god it could all be gone someone could come in and steal all my stuff like it's just and you want to go backwards you it's like you want to crawl back in to this chrysalis you are so hesitant to move forward with this new change because you're kind of in your head about oh that could happen to me I guess what it feels like, like, you want to put the covers over your head and not get up and go to school because something bad could happen. So there's some guidance here. And now, okay, this is what really freaked me out when I started getting this message before I went into the whole, you know, getting my fingers stuck in a car door. Um, she who knows. I feel like you've convinced yourself you know how things are gonna work out for you. I really do. Like, I looked at this card and it just struck me. Wisdom, clarity, resolution. And what I get is, you know, you know, but yet you will not let it happen. And I feel like, because you feel so adamant about not letting this happen whatever it is so let's say it's work related um somebody got replaced i don't know they got they got replaced by someone better i'm not gonna let that happen i'm gonna upgrade myself i'm gonna do stuff on the weekends i'm gonna do all these things so that they don't replace me it's not gonna happen and you know when this is where the caution comes in here um, the, you have to be careful with that energy of, I'm going to make sure this does not happen to me, is that you work so hard on making sure this does not happen to me, that you actually make it happen. Because the universe doesn't hear this not going to. They just get the action. Whatever that is, whatever happened to someone else or something else, um, yeah. Then it happens. You literally start pushing yourself towards that happening. However, this plays out. You need to be. You need to be fearless and bold. Don't go back into the chrysalis. Well, you can't. You can't go back into the chrysalis. So at some point, you have to somehow release that energy of not wanting to accept something that happened, not wanting to accept something that happened, and back away. Back away from the chrysalis, okay? <laughs> Spread out the wings, start, you know, airing them out. Exercise and get ready to take flight. And whatever this is, the energy around you has changed, but it feels like it's changed indirectly. Has it changed specifically in your 
day-to-day -day dynamic. But it's something that could kind of be associated with your day-to-day -day dynamic. It's a weird energy. It's a weird energy. Like it could be, like I said, something that happened to a colleague, something that happened to a neighbor. And now, what if? Like maybe the neighbor's house got broken into and now you're freaking out. Like, but my TV's worth more money than theirs. Or I don't have a security system. I'm gonna get a security system. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna get a big German Shepherd. I'm gonna put the backyard. Like, it's this almost overreaction to something that happened to someone else that's changed the energy around you, right? Like if something bad happens to your neighbor, you can kind of feel that. Like you can, because you know, you know them, hopefully you know them well, you know, yeah, know them somewhat well. And, um, but they're close to you. They're so close to you that it's just like, wow, if that happened there, that could happen to me because I'm right here. And you feel that, you feel that change, you feel that dynamic, that difference. And it's kind of freaking you out. But yet, it has created a new cycle somehow. The energy is different. So you're in situations, a cycle, a new chapter. Things are a little different somehow. Things are a little different somehow. I want to actually pull a clarifier on this. I'm not getting a strong message on this, which is quite unusual. I usually get a pretty clear message on this. Otter spirit, you are never alone. It's obvious, right? Like you're never alone. There's always spirit guides. You always have archangels, guardian angels, all that. that. There's something else about this card and I haven't pulled it in yet. Number six, four, six. This and the bear, there's something about these two cards that are not bringing in a clear message to me yet. So I'm gonna go to the tarot. Obviously, whatever it is, it would be better expressed in the tarot cards. So I was looking at the otter spirit first. You were never alone. I'm just gonna ask clarification. I'm gonna ask any questions, just, you know. Why is this card here? Clarification for the Otter Spirit, you are never alone. Oh, gosh, you are thinking yourself into something. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you're freaking yourself out. <laughs> you're freaking yourself out. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so the Otter Spirit, you are never alone. What are the clarifiers? that came out for that card. The first one was the Seven of Swords. The Seven of Swords. This is often about, you know, like getting the heck out of, a do out of Dodge, man. Like being, I wanna say pushed to a point where if I have to sneak out in the night, I'll sneak out. <laughs> now some, some tarot readers will say it's the lying and cheating kind of. I don't like that lying and cheating it's very very to me very 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 few circumstances and situations where someone is just a liar and a cheater i mean there are some people like that but not a lot and most of the time it's all about our perception of people and our own um projections of our truth onto someone else and you know if something's not serving somebody they have to get out because there could be something going on internally that we're not even aware of it's killing them or they're just driving them crazy, whatever it is, we don't know. Um, so I don't like to call it the lion cheating card, but it is needing to get the heck out of Dodge. It's like, this truth is too hard for me. I need to get away from it almost. You got two aces that came out though too. So, but then here's Magnus or Magus, somebody told totally me know it's Magus. It's probably Gemini. I can only rely on Gemini to criticize me and expand my vocabulary. <laughs> the Magus, the Magus, 
which is the magician. It's just the damn magician, okay? It's the magician, which is all about manifestation. But the magician can also be about, now you see me, now you don't. Now you see me, now you don't. Here I am, now I'm not. Here I am. <laughs> so, you know, in and out, getting the heck out. It's almost to me like these two cards together are a reminder of your connection to universe and how you manifest your life. Ooh, okay, your connection to the universe. You are never alone. So no matter what your thoughts are, even if you're not um, actively trying to manifest, you're always manifesting. The universe is always listening. You're not, you're never alone. So you have to be really careful of your thought process in this situation right now. Because you can think yourself to the point where, you know, you allow the universe if the neighbor's house got broken into, um, you worry about it enough, yeah, yours will. <laughs> That's kind of how it happens. You just put that energy out there and you know, but then the person who's not at all worried and never locks their damn door, nobody ever comes over. The four of pentacles. You are hanging on so tight to what it is that you know you don't want to go into the unknown about this situation. It's because it's a new energy. You know, I'm just hanging tight. I don't want to do it. But yet I want to remove myself from that. I want to get, into the chrysalis I want to go back to before this happened is what that I want to go back to before this happened whatever this happened is for you you want to go back but you can't and you do need to be careful because you are manifesting all the time we all are so it's just um, it's a little bit of a toxic thought process and we all we all get there we all do gosh Anyone who doesn't, um, the only people who probably don't get into a toxic thought press process are probably those that, um, from newborns to four-year-olds, <laughs> it's just like, just living my day. Then, okay, so the Ace of Cups, I feel, um, hmm. okay, I'm going to show you the last three, I can hold them up here. Ace of Cups, Five of Swords, and the Ace of Swords here. I feel, yeah, I need to have them together, these three. Because you are never alone. Oh, I mixed them up. There we go. You are never alone. You are never alone. You are never alone. Because the Five of Swords too, but that can be about a selfish need to... To look after yourself for me as well and you have to be selfish so we all do at any given time you always have to put the mask on first when the airplane is going down before you can help anyone else right like this you've got the seven of swords and the five of swords here which is really oh i need to get away from this whatever this is that happened to you um Okay, now I get it. So the Ace of Cups and the Ace of Swords are on either side of this Five of Swords. That says to me, what you need to focus on is this new beginning, is this new energy. You're trying so hard to push it away that you're actually bringing it to you. You're pushing. So when we push against anything, the universe responds by pushing back. And I don't know if you've noticed, but the universe is bigger than you and it's bigger than me. So it pushes back much harder than you can or I can. So when you push, 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 the universe is like, hey, back at you, right? Careful. So this Ace of Swords and Ace of Cups, Kind of, ex kind of accept somehow whatever this is that's happened. And instead of saying, I don't want this to happen. I don't want this to happen to me. I'm afraid it's going to happen to me. Change it into, create this situation into an Ace of Cups and an Ace of Swords. So develop your own new truth now. What is your new truth because of this situation? What is it from your heart center? And what is it from your mind and your intuition? And then live off of that new truth as opposed to I don't want to accept it I don't want to look at it I don't want I'm worried it's gonna happen I'm not gonna let that happen the way to not let that happen is to allow that energy to allow this cycle to move 
you move with it and you go into your heart and your mind and you create and project your truth in it. Your truth, your real truth. You know, because you're not living someone else's life. You're not. So, and I never got my fingers caught in the door again. <laughs> Knock on wood. Um, I don't think I would handle it as well as an adult. I really would not. Oh God, I'd probably pass out and pee myself. <laughs> I think I would. Um, but yeah, just, okay. So that was all about you're never alone. I think the strongest message in that with you're never alone were these, particularly these two cards. You know, be careful. The universe is always listening. The universe is always with you. You're always manifesting. Um, these are sort of the advice cards here. Oh, I love the way these hearts and the five of swords here, these hearts are all kind of fluttering around this five of swords. It's, you know, using your heart chakra, using your deeper self to really look at what your truth is. Your truth is not what happened to the neighbor. Your truth is not what happened to um, your cousin. Or your truth is not what happened to your work colleague. It's not. Okay. Um, she who loved once. Fragile secret love rejection. Mm, see? And I feel like, you know, these two cards are so powerful. From the she who... They're so powerful. Like this one, be careful. Like the energy that you are projecting is so powerful right now. It is just a manifest. You can manifest, manifest, manifest. The universe is always listening. It's really, really important to create, to, to really look at and understand what your truth is. It, it feels like, it feels like a massive cycle change maybe for whoever this is that is somehow indirectly connected to you. And by that, it has created a small cycle change in your life, in your day to day. But that has somehow created very strong feelings, thoughts, energies, emotions from you. And that you're projecting it very strongly out into the universe. Remember, do not push back. It's bigger than you and me. It's pretty much infinite. So it's going to push you right into next week. <laughs> careful pushing the universe um the bear the bear card was the other one that i need a clarification on the bear card the bear card the bear card the bear card what do we have with the bear card why is the bear card here for libra why is the bear card here for libra the bear card looks so intently at that soul retrieval card with the um you know, with the chrysalis, this is how they're sitting on the table. The bear energy is just looking at the, oh yeah, okay, the hermit. Ah. What is that? Oh, it's like a three-headed dog at the bottom and a sperm. There's a lot of sperm in this deck. I don't know why. <laughs> okay, so the hermit card, now he's, the hermit lights his own way. The hermit looks for answers and looks for clarity. So these are the two cards out of, okay, you've got three from this unknown animal spirit deck. So these are the two cards that really tell me how freaked out and insecure it's made you feel this cycle change, big cycle change to someone else, let's see, say, but it's turned into a minor cycle change for you. But it's almost like the aftershock of it has made you feel, um, very insecure, very worried. Whereas the bear is looking, is the bear, your deeper self, you know, and this consider this message that, this is from your deeper self. Your soul telling that, because that's ego, right? That's the ego who's trying to manifest here. It's not gonna happen to us, it's not, that's the talk of the ego. Your deeper self is looking at this, no, no, no. You're not going back into the chrysalis. What you're actually going to do is take this opportunity to light your own way, go into your heart and your mind, and through that connection, you will find your truth. And look at here, we have a cosmic egg up here that's waiting to be discovered. There's actually something really good for you in this situation. 
but you're focused on the bad and the prospect of this bad thing happening to you somehow. There's actually something really good. And if you go into your deeper self, you're going to see it. You're going to see that you've got the Ace of Cups. You've got the Ace of Swords. You are harnessing, you are using the sun, the sun energy to light your future, to light your path. Do you hear that? It's like a helicopter. <laughs> so loud. My goodness. Between the boy across the way, hammering and putting together his chair in a helicopter. But I don't understand why there's this three-headed dog. There's three ways you can go, but it's really creepy looking. It's so creepy looking. <laughs> look at that. You see the three-headed dog? Look at that thing. It almost looks like a reptile dog or a hairless dog, though. And then there's a the little sperm. I'm not getting like a message about those three, those two, four. It's a three-headed dog. I guess we need to include each one. Ah. You and someone else will create some good stuff. Oh, UPS is making a delivery. <laughs> I'm waiting for something to go. So you and someone else are going to create some really good stuff here. That's why the sperm is here. The sperm is going up to the sun. You have so much goodness coming towards you. Don't you worry about what happens to others. Don't you worry about that. Get your head out of that. Don't think about that. And I know, you know what? It's because you care, Libra. You're always caring. You're always trying to make sure everyone is happy and balanced. You need to work on you right now. Just work on you. Don't worry. And know your truth. Okay, I'm glad we clarified that because it felt like you were moving into some dangerous um, thinking process that could manifest this bad thing. But that's not what's meant to happen for you. So just leave that alone. Leave that alone. All right, so to clear out that bad energy, we're going to do the singing bowl for you. That was a good message. That was an interesting one. I love doing these. All right, guys. Until next time, do be gentle with yourselves. Bye.